you subscribe to Pando? That's so hot. All right, all right. Boys should be fine. Everything, everything should be working. All right, guys. Uh, welcome to FC Chat. This is basically where we're trying to get FCs together and talk about all kinds of things regarding FCing or even more. Right? Sometimes we talk about all kinds of other stuff wherever the conversation goes. And I'm saying conversation since it's not supposed to be an, an interview or anything, right? Uh, if anyone here has any questions, you can always put them in chat and we'll try. I can't promise it, but we'll try to bring it up if it fits in. You know, there's some dumb questions in this world. <laughs> so if you have a good one, though, we will try our best. Um, so one thing I want to bring up for sure today is, of course, the Quantum Core stuff, right? It's I think it's quite impactful, maybe. Uh, maybe I shouldn't say impactful um, directly, but it kind of shows where CCP wants to go with Citadels a little bit. Um, and I thought uh, Darkshine is going to have an interesting take on things because um, we're very close actually and we talk all the time. And we had a discussion, when was it, like two days ago or so? We were playing PUBG, which is usually where we bring up like weird shit. And I try to con convince him of like the newest weirdo doctrine and shit. But we also talk about all kinds of uh, stuff. And uh, I think our opinions went like two different directions, basically. And uh, I think I instantly thought like, hmm, maybe this is the perfect time to actually bring him on officially. Because we had you on before um, when we had like another guest on and you jumped in. I think even with Hi together, right? And uh, I was I was, I was a Tau. I almost the same, right? Almost the same. Um but yeah, I, I thought like you probably have a good take on that too. And then hi is gonna be interesting. Um because like he's in a smaller group in low sec. I mean I say smaller, right? For low sec, you're quite big still, I guess. I'm not even sure what you guys are doing at the moment, but nothing. But well, you, you're always doing something, I guess. Like your dudes are doing something, but yeah, you're not as active as you used to be. It was real life hit, right? Yeah. But um, you can probably give a b little bit more insight of like the Citadel situation uh, from a smaller group for sure, right? Because I think this is probably going to impact smaller groups more than bigger groups. Um, and yeah. So I thought the two of you and, I mean, we are all, like, we're good friends. I mean, maybe you two are not as much of a friend anymore after the little bit of drama with, like, you know, when the evil snuffles attacked. Do you know, um, I think Dark Shines is pretty chill with me. We didn't really say anything hostile to each other. I wasn't even playing that much, so. But, oh. I think it's okay. Yeah, but I yeah. think our, our friendship, like, suffered a little bit on that little phase, right? So I kind of miss the good old times, I have to say. And I miss... I think, hmm? I think a lot of what we've done together, it was almost... Well, not that it was, like, a business relationship, but it was a relationship built on activity. So yeah, definitely. when everyone was super active, it was very easy to be uh, friendly. But when that activity kind of went away a bit because of, things, like, different things that were happening it's kind of hard to measure sometimes yeah yeah i mean me and Tao don't do nearly as much as we used to but you and dark China this is still very active yeah i mean i think like you know who's missing actually is kenda right right i think kenda cartel 
yeah if kendar was here today then we would have like the, the full record pass cartel i've heard that kendar is just missing from eve in general now yeah so, i mean he floats around he's here sometimes and he's gone like after a day yeah, I mean, he wanted to be active again, I guess. I'm not sure um, why he changed his mind, but maybe, I mean, I don't know. I don't even want to speculate, to be honest. Kind of... He's just trying to be more active in real life. Yeah, but it's kind of sad. Like, I, would, I would love to have like uh, Kenda around again, and then, you know, like the good old times, like Kenda's forming some stuff. I and Tower forming some stuff, we're forming some stuff, and then we, you know, find a place and, uh, you know, <laughs> like someone has something special planned. I think it was easier. I think it was easier for us to do stuff back then as well, because the game was way less blobby on the bigger scale than it is now, right? Like everyone's everywhere these days. There's no like mid scale fights like there used to be. Well, you know, mid scale in inverted commas, where it was like, you know, 300 versus 300 or it's more. People get there very quickly. It's different. I love how 300 versus 300 is considered mid scale. Yeah. Well, for like null sec stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. Dude, I introduced you as like a smaller scale guy, like mid scale guy. And you're like a mid scale 300 people. I mean, we're tiny now. I think every single low sec alliance on paper is bigger than us now, like the big ones. Sharakata recruited. There's a new alliance in low sec with a bunch of guys. Siege Green's bigger. Wrecking Crew Coalition's much bigger. I mean, Siege Green, they have been constantly, like, growing, right? Yeah, they, like, used, when we deployed to Secede, they were, like, forming massive numbers, like, full fleets. Full fleets? In their prime time, like, 1400 or whatever. Yeah. They're Korean, right? Like, 100 battleships plus dreads and, you know, other stuff. And, you know, uh, who's, the, who's the guy? Arrestrian? I actually did I yeah I think I did invite him but he um had concerns like language wise and then we would need a you know, like a translator a door matcher I've never done that I'm not sure if that would make for like a good conversation if you have like a middleman unless I ver I know maybe the middleman the the translator very well you know then it may it might just make sense but I think uh, language barrier is a little bit much for a podcast, right? But he probably has some good stories to tell too. But yeah, he's a good guy. Yeah, so if we want to talk about the quantum course, right? I'm pretty sure you both are very aware. So, do you think it's a, overall an improvement for the game, and do you think it's gone in the right direction? Going to go first, Shines? Yeah. I mean, I am happy with the change insofar as it is a change that CCP have not said we are happy with Citadels. This is what they are. And you can see, like, I mean, basically, they're introducing this item that you have to stick into a Citadel that costs X amount of money and is always going to cost that much money because it's purchasable from uh, NPCs. And um, basically it will drop, right? So there's, they want to make, I mean, just at the, at the, at the face of it, they want to make structures cost more, hopefully to cut down on spam, but also that some people can get drops from different things. So I, I I think the direction that they're going in is a good one. I think the mechanic itself is a bit weird. Um, I don't really have strong feelings on it either way. I, like, I don't think it's a terrible thing. I also don't think it's a great thing. Um, it's just a thing, but it is a change to structures, which I am in favor of. Yeah, I, I mean, think... I... sorry, go ahead. Hi. No, you go ahead, Panda. That's fine, I cut you off. Yeah, I think I, I agree to, like, to some degree. But, so my problem was, um, yes, it displays, they, I mean, they basically admit, you know, Citadels aren't perfect. We all knew that all along, but um, I believe it's a little bit too soft, which then tells me there's not going to be any, like, anytime soon, there's not going to be, like, 
like a real impactful change coming right that's my that's my fear that we're going to be stuck for the next two years with this system it is technically an improvement i believe but i think it's not a uh, you know it doesn't go far enough it really doesn't right i don't think it solves anything um like i mean on what costs i'm just looking here I mean, yeah, I agree with you and Shines because I think that at the end of the day, it's targeted for Citadel spam, and I think they've done it in a way that they'll kind of profit a bit off of it by making it an ISK sync because obviously money's being taken out of the game if you have to buy it from NPCs, but I don't think it already addressed Citadel spam massively. I think it will affect more the you know smaller scale players who have less money to throw around because all the big alliances this is like pennies almost to them right it won't make it that much of a difference so i think there'll still will be a pretty decent amount of citadel spam around the game but hopefully more will die i think it's a change but i don't think it's a very good change to address citadel spam yeah so the, the things they want to fix with it right let's talk about that first i guess so um I actually I had it I had it written down but I can't find find the, the file so I'm reading it out of a combo here. So the first one is insufficient rewards for attackers in case of uncontested bashes. And so yes, technically, but at the same time, so my problem is, and that's why I, I think your input high is going to be uh, interesting is if the if the reward is the same, if you let's say pan fam and uh, like um, the blue donor comes in and they kill the one EQ keeps them shouldn't that keeps that drop more than for example uh the keep stuff from snuff and low sec if you had one right do you have one i don't even know i don't think you have one no. actually yeah so but if you had one right shouldn't there be a difference you know shouldn't like isn't that way more impactful to kill the one EQ keeps them instead of the snuff low sec keeps them and isn't it very logical in my eyes that a drop rate, it doesn't even matter how high, if you go for 10%, 20%, 50%, 50%, but isn't it logical to say if there was a drop rate on things that would like in an organic way fix that issue and say, okay, like if you take on the bigger opponent, then you also have a bigger chance of drop. And then if you p uh, take on a small opponent, yeah, guess what? There's very little in that keeps or in that citadel, whatever it is, right? I, I just think if you look back at the beginning of Eve, imagine that would be for ships, right? Imagine they would have said from at the beginning uh, that you have a frigate license, a battleship license, and those drop, but everything else doesn't drop. And you have guys roaming around like Baltrum in his super pimp, whatever it is, being the same chance of drop, loot drop as like that mission runner from Heisek who's doing his first uh you know adventure into low right and it drops the same amount i kind of i just think that would be like very very wrong and i don't know why that doesn't apply for them in uh, when it comes to citadels well that's i mean i see that as more of an issue of citadels being too safe in general and yes if they actually drop more stuff it would be much better overall because there'd be more content generation because people would actually shoot this stuff I think for Citadel spam, I think it's a bit ridiculous that you can have systems with like 30 Astra houses, you know, two keep stars, 15 what is ours. I don't know how they'd address that because the only logical way would be to put a cap on it. But then how would you deal with the existing Citadels and stuff like that? So, so and that's exact. That's one thing I kept talking to, um, or like, I'm not sure if I brought it up too many times on the, on the podcast, but um, yes, it needs a heart limit. And we all knew from the start that it's going to need a heart limit, right? I mean, everyone could have made that prediction, really. Because, like, in, like, like back in the day, oh, yeah, those are titans. There's always going to be just a few of them, like, obviously. Like, if you make that mistake the first time, it's fine, right? We're not going to lose our minds about it. But then you do it the same with citadels, like with keepstars. There's always just going to be one. You know? Yeah. And so I think there's a... There, you know, it can't be that hard to put like a hard cap on it. And then you go and uh, say, let's say, I'm just going to say like, there's one keeps up a system 
And that's the absolute limit, right? And then you also, the system has reached a cap of 40 ZARs, for example, right? So you can't put up new 40 ZARs. But then you just would make it so you can put 40 ZARs up, but they're only going to hold for a certain amount of time if there's no 40 ZARs slot in the system free by, let's say, 10 days, right? And then they're going to abandon mode because then you have 10 days to either free up that 40 ZARs slot or get the job done if it's just for like, you know, killing a keepster or whatever but then it's temporary right so you know like you can't um you know just put up structures everywhere as much as you want like they would go abandoned and then you know yeah you'd be in well i think at the end of the day the crux of the issue is that ccp you know what we see as common sense like having you know drop rates for you know uh, locking the amount of citadels you can have in a system is common sense to us but you know i don't think they play their game and it's taken them a lot of time to actually understand the issues with Citadels. Can I just say on the like the drop rates? I mean, Panda, you know, we speak about yeah. this and we disagree. But something I've just 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 thought that's just popped into my head. Um, like, if you look at wormhole space, where wormhole space of hundred percent drop rates, and you look at groups like Inner Hell, basically groups who became big uh, in their world, right, in wormhole space and whose entire gameplay revolved around picking on everybody smaller than them that they had a didn't they have some kind of agreement with hard knocks and the bigger groups maybe they did maybe they didn't. i'm actually yeah, not yeah. sure on that uh, and they donut. made it and like their whole thing was that they would go around to somebody's wormhole um kill the structures scoop the loot and get out again my fear and the reason that i don't agree with assets uh with not not with asset safety with them uh with your stuff dropping is because the same thing would happen in nullsec and wormhole space is basically dead at the minute right so i would be afraid that the same thing would happen in nullsec i think if the game had two hundred thousand people actively playing every night where you could afford to lose some pissed off people then fine but like again the comparison you're making with with people losing a ship for example and not just a single item worth x amount of isk dropping compared to a um compared to the the you know all your assets dropping or like 50 percent or 10 percent or whatever it is what i would argue is that you undock your ship as soon as you undock you consent to losing it whereas if i have to go on two weeks holidays or if i not have to but if i'm going on two weeks holidays and i come back and all my shit is or half my shit has dropped. I mean, that would that would piss me off quite a lot. And then ha knowing that I had to prepare my stuff to to get it safe because I'm going on two weeks holidays makes it even more of a chore, right? Well, surely they could go around that by having some sort of mechanic where you can basically like put yourself at like a freezer or something for like a certain amount of money if you're going away from the game. I don't know. I like know. an at like a preemptive asset safety kind of thing. Yeah. Bank. Yeah. I don't yeah. necessarily agree with asset safety because I think asset safety is too easy. But I, I mean I don't really have a solution to this. All all I know is that like I think asset safety is broken a bit, but I also so, don't think that someone's assets dropping from a structure is in wormhole space, whatever, they're used to it. But I think it would be hugely detrimental to the game if it was brought into null tech. Yeah, I mean, so, it's like a just right, like when they bought that, and people weren't told about it, and lots of people lost a lot of money. I guess I see your point. Yeah, I I do see that point too, and I would say like you know obviously it's a co more complex thing. The whole citadel thing is like insanely complex if you think about it, right? Um, so obviously there would be like edge cases there would be like certain things you have to think about all of these things right and then the solution to that problem for example someone's going afk would for example could be right i'm not saying this is the holy grail of all citadel uh, solutions that you could set a um a staging or a, a headquarters right i mean there's already headquarters function in the game and it's completely worthless, right? People just set it to certain systems to keep the ADM higher more easily, right? That's basically the whole function, to be quite honest. 
But what if that would enable your SSS safety suddenly, right? So in your staging, so this, that citadel that you have like most of your assets in, right? That would have asset safety for you. Or it would only drop, for example, 5% of your stuff, right? There's always a chance then at least. I mean, something drops, you know what I mean? So you could make like a little, a little ex uh, exception there. So nobody goes on vacation for two weeks and then comes back and is completely surprised um you know i'm just saying i think the drop rate is super important and they should be looking at ways of getting it in right and i know it's not going to be easy right there's there's like other things that need to be considered i don't want people to like lose their assets or anything right i mean i kind of do but i kind of don't you know what i mean it's like, not like flagrantly losing their assets, but at the same time, there has to be some sort of risk involved in it in the first place. Otherwise, like, what's the point? Yeah. And you know what, Chance? When we had that discussion the other day, one point you brought up is like, um, how many people would get pissed off uh, if they lost their assets and all that stuff? And I think um, I agree at this point, right? But the thing is always... If you would introduce citadels today, would you introduce them the same way they are right now? Or would you then say maybe, okay, if everyone approaches them with a fresh take on it, would you then uh, introduce them with a drop rate? So people don't even get that mindset of, okay, my assets are safe in citadels. But they would always think, okay, I move so and so many assets into the citadel, the shit that I need, right? All the doctrine ships, maybe, maybe a Titan, but the Titan char is, you know, obviously in the Titan, so it, it shouldn't drop if it has a char inside it. Um, and then, you know, all that's, you know, it's a completely different mindset when it comes to citadels then. So people wouldn't hoard all that much inside, um, you know, those citadels. And then also, another take why I think a drop rate is very important is uh, look at Supers and Titans, right? A very important part um in the super cap proliferation is uh the fact that we now have citadels and one of the big parts why citadels are so much uh, crazier when it comes to building super caps is the safety aspect it's just so much more safe it's way less work it's cheaper too right and that's what's accelerated together with raw cards obviously accelerated this super cap situation that we have right now if you take a little bit of a risk factor in there Suddenly, people might just think about it, right? I mean, yes, but I think CCP has been gearing the game towards it, like a safer place for people to like PVE and you know build their titans or whatever for a while now. Because I think they're kind of trying to appeal more to the PVEs than the PVPs these days, and I don't think that they will do such harsh things to make null sex so risky. I don't think they can, you know, put in a citadel. Uh, loot mechanic right now just because of the fact there's a massive war going on and all the goons and you know everyone's just gonna cry if their citadels all getting bashed by 30,000 people at once well I don't think that introducing loot drops will get the content that we hope it would because what would happen is basically what's happened now where block A and block B will team up against block C they'll take all block C's stuff then they'll go on to block D and then whichever one is strongest at the end of it will go for each other, right? And that's not really, uh, to me, that's not really content. Like it's, it's just being blobbed, right? Like it's, like if you know you can go into one DQ, let's say let's say fifty percent of loot drops, right? Everybody and their mother, even more than is already banded up at the minute, would come to kill that keep star. And How it's not. Go ahead, yeah. Well, I was just going to say, I mean, yeah, you're right about the keep stuff thing, but I was more going to say, how would you go about splitting up the blobs these days? Because I feel like it's just natural progression anyways, where the blobs just get bigger and bigger and they all go to the same time as because they have less and less content because they're getting bigger and bigger. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a hard one, right? Because yeah. it's like, it's, I mean, that's how humans are, right? That's why we have cities. That's why people lived in settlements, in, you know, and grew that way instead of everyone just living in the woods. It's basically 
the same as Eve, right? Strength in numbers, but I mean, even there, right? You've got strength in numbers, so everyone groups up because they don't want to lose all their stuff. So the bigger the block, the less chance of them losing their their assets in a keep star, right? If it yeah. dies. Yes. I mean, so you you might be right, right? You might be right. I'm not gonna sit here and say like, no, 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 like I'm not married to any of my ideas, right? But at the same time, wouldn't you also think if you wanna kill stuff and make money, you want less people to share it with? And since we have Cable Wuta in chat, he knows what I'm talking about, right? He's like trying to steal all the satios just for himself, trying not to share with anyone, right? So wouldn't you think that's like a group like, for example, Snuff? You guys have a, a, a you know a certain size. You can take out a big citadels um, unless I mean obviously if there if there's a massive blob shown up, you're gonna you're gonna struggle. But you can take out big citadels like like you can kill citadels if you wanted to. If it's worth it, you might just come up with a plan to do it right, right timing, right you know doctrine, whatever right. So it, it might just be worth looking into it. But right now, why would you? Why would you go out and try to kill something that's actually hard to kill? It, it, there's no, there's no real point. But if you can tell your guys like, hey, I know they've been building whatever. They've been building Titans there, and it's quite far. Their super caps are not going to reach. Um, you know, if they if they move everything, then tough shit. We're just going to ref it and then, you know, leave it. But if they don't move, we might just be able to kill it. For example. Right? Well, actually, it is lucrative to shoot a Sotio with stuff building in it because anything that's in build has a chance to drop. You guys remember when we killed the Sotio from Horde with the Komodo building in it? Yep. I, I do actually remember. <laughs> yeah. And then someone had to actually calculate uh, at the drop stuff, like the, the shit that dropped. Someone had to go and calculate like what it actually was. And he found yeah, out that was, was it me. Come on. Was it you? <laughs> I think CCP would have to make a lot of big changes to actually split up a block in terms of citadels, as you say, are so you know much effort to fight on there, effort to kill, and there's not much reward. And it's also harder to make plays as an attacker against the defensive citadel. And in general, there's not very many plays you can make these days. It's very much a M plus one game because of the ships that are more overpowered these days, and there's no dynamic balancing or um, it's harder to fight outnumbered and stuff like that because of the resist nerfs and all this other stuff. I think for the game to be a bit more dispersed and people to be encouraged to go to more mid-scale alliances rather than the block alliances, you'd have to there'd have to be a lot of hard changes for CCP to do, and I don't think that will happen. I think they need to make Eve itself a lot bigger. Like, I know Eve is already huge and we have a lot of empty space, but look how quick we were able to get from say TCAG up to where was it uh 7RM in pure blind when we had fountain and yeah. all those jump bridges it's not just because of jump bridges so than yeah being. exactly so what you're suggesting is maybe not make eve bigger but spread it out or just simply don't have acl jump bridges right i've said it all the time all this acl stuff i'm not sure if i'm a fan right no, I think jump bridges are only one part of it. I think in general, like even, let's let's take um even now, for example, if I formed a fleet in one DQ, I could still get to seven RM in twenty minutes ish, maybe half an hour. Um so any small group that moved in there would always be threatened by me living in one excuse me, living in one DQ. Whereas if it took me, like, or it was harder to get there or longer to get there where it's not actually worth my time unless I want to invade that region. Through a wormhole, so you have to take a different composition. But honestly, if you look from, from 1DQ right now, we will take longer than 20 minutes to get there, right? We don't have jump bridges and fountain anymore. Maybe we can have one Titan bridge. Then it's at least 15, 20 jumps plus... I mean, I think it's probably like half an hour. Like if you, unless you form in like Scepters, right? Scepters, you can get there ASAP, right? 
think if Jumper just gave you fatigue, it wouldn't be as bad as it is. No, that's what Lipsifu just said in chat. Jump bridge fatigue. I'm not sure if I'm a fan of the fatigue thing, to be quite honest. I just think don't don't give uh, alliances, uh, like don't have them share jump bridge access. That's, you know, if if it's an init jump bridge, init can use it. If it's a goon jump bridge, goons can use it. Don't uh, mix it up so that everyone can use it. You know, but then wouldn't, for example, goons just put a jump bridge network parallel to your network so they can hop around the same well, way you can hop around? Ah, uh, jokes on you. We don't have a network. <laughs> <That's true>. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, I think we do have a jump bridge or two, right? In Curious? I'm not sure to be honest. But the thing is, they would have to do that, but it would make things really complicated for, for us. Imagine, like, we have to have, uh, like, systems. Now, in, like, imagine now in our situation, we would have to get jump bridges up inside Delve. We would have to swap soft and then mix it up properly. And it's a nightmare, right? So it would make life a little bit harder for bigger groups with more alliances. Definitely, right? So yeah. you, could, you could then argue, argue also that bigger alliances have then the advantage, but coalitions have the disadvantage, right? But if you want to be the biggest alliance, that's fine. Right. But uh, a coalition is not going to profit from that jump bridge network all that much. Yeah, no, I could. That would make sense, I guess, if they did that. Because it also means that, for example, let's look at like legacy. If they have all these like tiny ass alliances and they can't use the jump bridges, that means that they're going to have to like burn around and it's going to be way harder to get like a, a Voltron fleet together. Yeah, yeah, for example. Or like let's let's stick with the um, uh, Imperium um, example, right? Then you would have like Bastion and Init and uh, TNT and all these guys. Like we would all have to then think about like okay, what do we want to do? Like everyone has to have has to do their own thing. And then there is like obviously some alliances in the Imperium that are not doing their own thing, right? And they would be forced to do their own thing to a degree, right? And uh, I, I just think it would be like I don't think ACL. It's quality of life. I get it. You know? Everyone who's who's ever used them uh, to to get some allies from A to B, we've done it all the time. Obviously, it's great uh, quality of life. But is it good for the game? I don't think so. Right? Same for uh, same with Citadels actually. Why can we? Why can we even you know, dock in like a goon keepster? Right? Why not? Why not uh, have given two options? Either your lines or everyone, and you can't just you know ACL access or everything. I mean, it's. I'm not saying that's the way, right? With, when it comes to citadels, but just entertaining the idea of it. Like, what would happen, right? Imagine if you could fight over yourself in a way where you didn't have to fight three thousand people at once. Yeah, I mean, wouldn't that be amazing, Panda? When it comes to like Entosa stuff, like that's a, that's a whole another podcast. <laughs> it's like I don't even know. I I think the 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 the, the overall idea of it is you know, it goes in the right direction though. Right? I don't. Well, yeah, what you're saying is, but I think at the end of the day, if you start applying common sense to how to fix the game, that's never going to happen because we know CCP. I think they have some. I mean, they they always have like good reasons also to do certain things, right? I don't want to um, sit here and then shit on CCP for no reason, but I think the biggest mistake they made was like at the introduction of citadels, and then it's very hard to iterate on it and like fi fix it afterwards, right? So, and then they go step by step instead of having that grand picture in mind where do they want to go i think they just go step by step and this does this to step. CCP, though i think it's very hard not to do step by step with some of the people playing this game right yeah exactly i mean but you say about iterating on citadels and it being hard but citadels have been out for what like four or five years and 2016 yeah uh, all they've been doing is adding more and more stuff. There was a time where they hadn't like rebalanced ships properly for like two years, I think. And I was like, Jesus, this is because 
I mean, they are getting better and more dynamic with the changes, which is great. But I think they've taken their sweet time. And Citadel 3 was a core problem, and a lot of people had problems. If they, you know, people realize that after a year or two, the slower people, and I think people realized initially that it was going to be tough, and, you know, it took CCP ages to actually do something. I can't. I even... wonder. I'm oh, sorry. I just wonder, like, is all this, these are all problems obviously we're experiencing, but for me, the overarching issue that causes all these problems, like, why is why are we able to get from one DQ to X place so quickly because of jump bridges? Why like mean, why are we even sorry, excuse me. Why are we even going there in the first place? Why don't we like why don't we have something else to be doing? And like where's all the content? It's always in this one place, right? So for now, all the content in Eve is focused around Dell for the bigger groups. There is no content like in tribute uh not tribute, um Branch or Declan, there's no reason for anyone else to be anywhere else because there's nothing else happening. Whereas if there was more ways to, or if there was more content drivers in Eve rather than just what's here at the minute, maybe coalitions and people burning the fights just because there's nothing else to do wouldn't be such an issue. Yeah, definitely. I think bosses were much better content than like Athenosa, for example, now and the game has struggled to have a good content source ever since passes were taken out. I mean, the second you say passes, you s like you're basically referring to passive moon mining, right? I mean, yeah, but they were also much easier to fight on, for example, and the reward was better, right? You d you can take what I always say, hi, and you probably you might agree with this is that. The damage cap is the worst. Like for me, damage cap is the single worst yeah. fucking thing that they've introduced in Eve. If I know that I can drop fifty dreads and ref a structure in five minutes, I will do it, even if there's a chance that they will get a dictor on top of me and bubble my fifty dreads. Right, but either way, exactly. it's good content. Yeah. There was like actual risk. Like you'd have to put, you know, if you wanted to do it quickly, you'd have to put more on grid, right? Whereas now it's, you know, sit there and grind and your fleet members are like, why are we doing this? And you're like, why are we doing this? Because, you know, Citadel's cost fuck all in the grand scheme of things. And they can be like, lol, you can have to bash a fortress out while we just sit here doing nothing, right? They can blue ball you and you spend, you know, fuck loads of time on a Citadel. So, exactly. I yeah, I agree with the damage cap thing that you said, but at the same time, like damage cap also has an advantage, right? For example, if something gets hit, you know as an FC you want to defend it, you know you've got 25 minutes to react. If you get on grid within 20 minutes, there's a fair chance you can save it. Yeah, but who saves it on a shield timer anyways? I mean, I don't, I don't know if, how many times something gets saved in a shield timer, but at the same time... I mean, but for me, I mean, time. even that is content. You have to, like, CCB are doing this whole thing where they want you to live in your space, right? I mean, other than Tess, who are sitting in Esoteria, and Brave, who are in um, Catch, like, none of the Pam Pam alliances are living in their own space, right? Now, that's fine because it's an invasion at the minute, so whatever. But if they, like, if, if everything was run without damage caps, and let's say Dark Side was able to drop fifty dreads on a Sotio in, uh, uh, you know, up there somewhere, like an NC dot Sotio, and put it into Ref in five minutes and then jump out again. It would force groups to, uh, you know, to you know, Pan Fam space is fine to now. Okay, fair enough. But like, it would force groups to to focus more on on their own stuff as well, and not just, ah, oh, we've got three days, we'll save it on the whole timer MBD. But so wh where I'm trying, I was trying to get is like for certain citadels, I think like if I could make the call right now, I think the best way to do it would be probably make, make damage cap a thing on some citadels and damage cap remove it on others, right? For example, writer rule, like or all engineering pla uh, complexes and um, refineries, why do they need damage caps? Right, so that's what I would argue. And then staging citadels and stuff, like Astrosis, Fortisars, and Keepsars. Well, I think damage cap makes a lot of sense on those, right? Especially Keepsars. If you, if you look at it, sometimes we have a ridiculous amount of DPS on that grid. Imagine. Those things would get alphaed with the numbers we have now. I Only mean, because you can't repair it. If you could so repair it, then there's a massive reason to fight, right? 
So they talked to uh, a Tomp in chat earlier was talking about um, when we were talking about having like a cap of structures on grid, um, maybe assigning like some type of point system to it. So you can only have a certain amount of points in a system with keep stars, you know, being like the max amount of points and then having stuff like Athenors and whatnot being a low amount of points. You could take that and apply it to the damage cap situation too and have the damage cap depending on the points assigned to the structure that's in the system. I just think full stop the damage cap and the timer, the countdown timer, uh, the repair timer are are just horrible. Like they're not good for the game because there's no incentive to defend on the first timer. Whereas if you if you put like let's say high comes to one of our things and he drops 50 dreads and I know that I need to keep his 50 dreads there for a few minutes while I get a fleet formed. I can drop two faxes, three faxes, four faxes, whatever, just to slow down the refing of the structure, right? While I get my fleet in there. It just, it allows for gameplay and then counter gameplay. Exactly, yeah. Whereas this, like at the minute, the meta is form the biggest blob you can. And I'm not saying, I'm not pointing at any blobs. Just the meta is form the biggest blob you can and then defend your guys who are shooting it while they can't do it. Whereas, like, when we moved to Syndicate, it didn't matter that they were a blob. We fucking went out in Ospreys and we, we repped the shit out of towers <laughs> under, under their noses. And that is some of the best content you will ever have. Um, this repair timer and the damage cap is just pure bullshit, in my opinion. What Dark Shines is basically saying, I guess, like a simpler way of putting it, is there's no more spontaneous content, right? Nothing is spontaneous because everything is timer-based and you have so much time to react, and it means all your friends can get together. Whereas, for example, when uh, MC lived in Tribute like ages ago, um, we knew that Shadow Cartel was building dreads or something uh, in tribute and we went with like us and project mayhem went with like 30 dreads pretty stupidly and went to reinforce that pass and we almost got caught by nc dot because they almost got a couple dictators on there and we would have one cycled the pass i think or two cycled it. i think it was a dread carista and like we lost like one dread i think and you know that type of content is way more fun as dark shine says because it's like you know super intense and it's super spontaneous right yeah, I'm very aware, like, like Shines keeps bringing up a Syndicate, the campaign, right? We were fighting outnumbered there, like, we had a dread airtime of, like, five minutes, literally. Like, we undock, we sign out in, we ref this pass, and we have to sign out within five minutes, like... And then Hostiles had to do the same thing, right? And I think most of the time we got away with it. But, like, overall, like, it was a really good campaign. Um, so I totally know what you mean, right? But then also, think about it. These... Um, these like ninja ref ops, those five minute airtime kind of ref ops, those were usually R64s and stuff like this, right? So, uh, but that's I've... because the bigger entities owned the R64s that were more scary, right? You wouldn't really give a shit if you are refing some pass from some randoms, right? Yeah, obviously. I mean, there's a reason why it was as R64s. I mean, Citadels were already in the game. Actually, they were introduced during that campaign, right? Am I right? I think yeah. so. There yeah. was a pretty long period where Citadels and Passes existed, which wasn't that bad, to be honest. Yeah, but then also, we put up a Fortisar um, in X-M and Syndicate at the time, and an NC was there with Super Titans, everything, like, a backing... Um, what was the other? Oh, yeah, MC at the time. Rest in peace. Mercenary Coalition. Um, so they were backing these guys up and stuff like this. But then we had some epic fights on that Fortisar, right? Let's not forget. Damage Cap was there, and like that was the first iteration of Citadels when they were still broken with the whole bubble range disaster and all that stuff, right? Um, we had great fights there. Like two or th like three of them, actually. And you know what? The first good fight we had was when they started refing the Fortisar. And they didn't ref it in five minutes. They had to do it in 25 minutes. And then we undocked and we did something, right? I think on the initial ref, we couldn't do much. But it was our staging citadel. So it was very easy for us to undock and, you know, do something. And I mean, 
that's my argument on staging stuff like normal citadels i think damage cap might just be the better way to go content wise if to, Not i would wars. i like what you said about having engineering and uh like and, and the north for example not having yeah cap a uh, damage cap because that would make more sense because they're the things that are more at risk as well and you know but it doesn't affect you if they die as much it affects you income wise but it wouldn't affect you as much you know your ships and stuff so i could see that and that would probably make more content as well anyways and you know what i think that's probably also more realistic from like a perspective what would ccp do right would they change like would they completely remove damage cap i doubt it right so but removing them on engineering complexes and um refineries i think that's very possible maybe but yeah it's, maybe sorry. i feel like a better solution than a damn like for example they put damage cap in but they don't want to limit the amount of structures uh, structures you have in space right so on one side they're saying we're not limiting anything on the other side they're saying there's a hard limit on these and then it's kind of hilarious because with towers, you had a self-limiting cap. You could only drop as many towers as there were moons in system. But, that but there limit was no was, damage cap on them. But that limit was rarely a, a factor, you know? In HGP uh, it is because there's like seven moons, but other than that. I mean, it was sometimes. In the vast majority of cases, no. But like, there's no... You also no... couldn't live out your path. Yeah. But like, it's... I mean, instead of a damage cap, I would rather see a massive increase to HP. Now, I know small groups wouldn't like that, but like yeah, increase the HP so that it takes longer to ref it with bigger numbers see, and let them be repaired. You say that small groups wouldn't like that, but let's be honest here, who doesn't have a capital these days, right? Like it wouldn't make probably that much difference and it would create a bigger issue uh isk sync because people would have to put more on grid and to everyone honest, has capitals these days or pimple shocks. i i was just trying to be diplomatic about it i don't really give a fuck about the smaller groups because <laughs> ccp <laughs> tried to ccp tried to make these changes with the small groups in mind and they end up fucking over everybody else because of it so, they fucked up they fucked up yeah. everybody right like, the small groups didn't really benefit from it right nobody really no. benefited from it I mean, people can say, for example, about, you know, the passive income thing it being better for members and stuff, but I think the hit to content, for example, was harder because of how CCP did it, not that it was getting rid of passive income, the fact that they did it in such a stupid way, right? Like, yes, players benefited, but the game didn't really benefit at all in any way. Yeah, it's kind of strange because, like... It was cool in one way because it's an activity, right? So your moon mining became an activity. Now, it's a game. Everything in this game should be about activity. However, it just swung way too far in the other direction because you spend all your time mining your moons. Where's the time? Like, for example, snuff, right? If you had taken all the R64s in, um, uh, where's it, Black Rise and somewhere else, and you had to keep mining them, you know, to keep your members' ISK so you could uh, afford dread bombs and stuff. Like, compared to passive moon mining versus the active moon mining, how much time did you actually have to PvP compared to having to break it down with PvE instead? I mean, the game balanced itself out in that aspect anyway, Shines, because we had way less to do once all the fucking content generators are gone, right? <laughs> so, well, you know. yeah, true. But like, I mean, CCP have nearly fixed the issue already, or they've they've implemented a change. I think Norman mentioned it, where if it was to go back, like remove the damage cap, remove the repair cycles, all that stuff, and make it a shooting and a repairing game, which is basically what Eve is. Um, they've already put a limit on how many uh, reps are going to be effective, right? So if you bring a big enough force, so I know one argument against that is, oh well, there's faxes now all those triage carriers back then and it didn't stop people like if you have a big enough force eventually you will out dps the, the reps that are coming in right so mm -hmm. if you are determined enough you will ref that structure regardless of what they're repairing it with and then the repairing 
would become nearly the damage cap, but it's player influenced rather than um rather than some dumb mechanic. Yeah. I mean I I would be completely fine with that. I'm sure a lot of people would have issues. At the end of the day, we just have to kind of see what CCP does um, and pray it's not terrible. I mean, we can just pray, but I feel like talking about it, I'm sure some CSM guys are listening. Maybe even CC- I know CCP is also listening to this. So, like, you know, having a Aren't conversation you on the about CSM Panda? <laughs> not on the CSM, no. Don't uh, the I'm running now, so yeah, next, next year, ESA for CSM next year. We never talked about um, the fact that isn't Fountain finished now. What do you guys think uh, is going to happen in Delve? Do you think there will be keep star finds? I think so. Yeah, and I'm kind of. I mean, do Titans have it's... fuck all the HP now, right? Armor Titans, especially. Well, that counts for both sides, though, right? Our time well, exactly. don't have that much HP. <laughs> That's what so, I'm saying. Yeah, we can't it's just like wing it. But uh, yeah, we've got some things in mind. Right? I can't obviously talk about like what actually the plan is, but um, yeah, I think at the second um, they actually start going towards Quarius Dive, it's going to be a little bit more interesting when it comes to keep stuff fights. Is your plan going to be taking no tank Pharoxes and Rokes and then turning on your PDS? No tank Pharoxes and then PDS? PDS yeah, ourselves? Did you not see my good still? One of the timers. I'm pretty sure Asher made some sort of like no tank Pharox fit and then they used it on no, a timer. So... And then no, 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 no. I think the, what the dudes warped in the, wasn't it the Hurricanes? He, like, they decided that it would be the Pharox that have more base HP than the hostiles, basically. So they were able to turn off the PDS just as the shit was dying. And right. I also, like a lot of times on the battle report, it might just look weird because they turn on the PDS all the time and stuff like this. Well, so sometimes what... it's hard to turn it off, right? In tie dye, because it glitches out. Yeah, but like the idea is you can outrange the hostile Pharoxes because you're sniper fit. And then if they warp onto you, it's very hard to pin you down. Any Scepter, a Soul Freak, they struggle with PDS, and then obviously normal bubbles struggle. And if you see a Hick, that's your primary, right? So, um, you know, they warp down, your PDS on. If you're free, boom, you, weep, you warp the fleet out. And then, you know, rinse and re- repeat, basically. And uh, I think on the battle report, if you lose then a couple of those Pharoxes, yeah, the PDS is going to end up like on the like top damage. And it well, looks like you killed yourself with the PDS. It's just very risky using a fleet like that with PDS as in heavy tie Like in our Lantern timer, when we used the PDS, it got stuck and it wouldn't turn off. And that wasn't even that many people. Yeah. Yeah, there's like when we talk about citadels and content uh, generation and stuff like this, I think the PDS is like, it's not good for content. Same for the keeps the DD, right? I, I, don't, I don't get it. Like the keeps the DD, why does it hit subcaps, right? So um, there's a couple of things. Start dominance. I mean, it looks cool. That's why it's in. Let's be honest. That's why it's in the game because it looks cool, right? It's not because it like game, um, designed um, wise or like whatever it makes a lot of sense yeah if you want to like dd some caps i guess that makes sense but on subs why i mean citadel weapons are another issue right there's a lot of issues with citadels so yeah Yeah. it's like for example you used to be able to incapacitate a pass which in a lot of ways was way less strong than a citadel anyways and you can't do that with a citadel, so you know it's a lot of things. Yeah, um, until you come across a fucking shredder pause that just absolutely eats you. And yeah, exactly. Unless people were super like fast, like and organized, right? If you if they knew this pause is like about to attack, get attacked or whatever, like it's a very high chance they might just have enough gunners there and a shit ton of guns, and then it was actually quite a force, right? Yeah, but, but, but it then... took more, right? You had four. Let's say you had forty or fifty guns or turrets on a tower. That was what ten guys, twelve guys, depending on skills, actually yeah. coordinating and doing stuff. So again, that is it's getting true. people out to do stuff rather than me logging in an alt and just you know freaking mm-hmm. AFK doomsdaying people. Yeah, you basically needed a small fleet 
to control the guns, right? Yeah. You had like a Death Star. Yeah, I mean, we see now like a tiny reincarnation of that with the whole everyone puts their jump bridges on like post grids so they don't get refed by like five bombers or some shit, right? And then you could again make that argument for damage cap. You know, it's like. I get it, right? Why do have why jump bridges? Why do they have a damage cap, right? Like if you go and hit that jump bridge for like an hour with those bombers and you almost get it, but then I force them off, well then you should be forced to go and ref uh, wrap it up. Absolutely, absolutely. To yes. to make sure like it's not getting refed easily then, right? So you put effects on it. Maybe that's what I wanted, and then suddenly two hundred kickies uh, come out of nowhere and kill your faxes, right? So, um, yeah, yeah. I think I agree with the damage cap thing. I wonder how no. many other FCs uh, agree with that. I mean, I always agree to, like, I always said, like, I, I get the point. I'm not, I'm not sure if the damage cap removal is good in every situation, right? That there are some situations where damage cap is actually beneficial. Hi, you're gonna have to come play some PUBG with us so I can actually win arguments over there as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why I like a lot of PUBG. Uh... Sorry, say the one. I just said I haven't played in ages. PUBG. You've played it before? I I remember playing it with Kenda. He's the worst yeah, guy to play anything with. You know why? We I talk did. about like, hey, let's play a, let's play a round of PUBG, and he's like, Yeah, yeah I'm gonna be there. Then you wait half an hour, then he finally shows up. Then you join a fleet, uh, not a fleet, uh, a match. He's like, he instantly dies and then just quits and is AFK again, you know? It's like, that's the typical Kenna, like other game experience. The worst. The no, PUBG form of time. that one time, he fucking ran me over first. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. we have some good PUBG stories too. It's, uh, you know, that game, it kind of sucks, but I think the principle is kind of fun. So... I still enjoy playing it every now and then. The Wiggle Shitlers. Yeah, don't get me started on those. Basically the speed tankers of uh, PUBG. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> yeah. The na nano kitey bullshit. The, the kitey bullshit of PUBG. <laughs> Maybe I'm going to stream it one day and people can, uh, can get the full experience. One day. But yeah. It's um, gonna be interesting to see what the like what like the blue donut does when they come into delve and Quirius where you know goons have keep stars because like when we went north and sieged um those guys up in Declan and stuff, um like with X forty seven for example, it was pretty like it, it was very much you were two massive, like hugely tanked out Titan fleets and you would jump in and doomsday each other until one side lost. But now with the number of titans that everyone has with the ehp uh nerfs and you know everything else that that has happened if two titan fleets go at it there's going to be a lot of dead people like a yeah. lot so, of dead titans. i think the node won't handle it honestly it's way too many people and way too much happening i said i think the node won't handle it it's yeah. way too many people and way too much happening you might be right you know, we saw it in uh, KVN, and it wasn't even like a full-on, like all serious kind of fight. It was more like a like let's let's make him bleed a little bit, and you know, we didn't have anything else to do. I believe uh, I actually wasn't even there, but um, you know, imagine that was a like an all-in kind of fight. I I think that the node has like a very little chance of survival. I'm no, not it's sure. I hubs solve then keep stars. Yeah, that's a smart thing to do, right? I mean, but, that's uh, that's basically the only way to do it. They struggled but, enough with the fountain ones when there was a subcap defense. So, like, yeah, I guess we'll wait and see what happens. Yeah, Just I mean, so they have to sneak closer, right? So, what what he's saying is like, you you have to take the eye up, then you have to hold the eye up long enough for then get soft three to then have. Uh, the ability to put a jammer down to then have the ability to anchor your own keeps uh, to then uh, you know move forward right. to then be in range to the keeps that you want to hit 
which I have you need to kill first, and then you can hit the keepster. And you know, there's a couple steps involved first, right? And they're quite I'm not sure how many mids. Is it two mids? Or is it one mid to the closest keepster from from the keepster chain they have? But they have to put um at least one more up, I believe. I don't think they have a keepster in range of one of our keepsters so far. No, not yet. Yeah. So it's gonna be interesting for sure. But uh, it's going to be a little bit different than the fountain stuff and the whole, like, everyone's poking at each other a little bit. And then, you know, everyone goes to Reddit celebrating, like, some shit. Like, oh, look, and we killed Reddit 10 billion. Reddit hands down the fucking worst thing about this war. <laughs> it might be true. I mean, there are some good memes. I mean, some, some stuff makes me giggle. I forgot what it was uh, the other day, and there was some, some good... <sighs> Fuck, I wish I would have saved it. But, you know, there's some good stuff, too. You just have to filter it. But it takes way too long to filter it through all the bullshit. I just feel like everyone, everyone on all sides, like, people have just seemed to devolve into fucking horny monkeys or something that just have to post bullshit on Reddit. Like, it's just everybody. I don't know. It's too much. Reddit's because Reddit's the real battlefield. Sometimes it is. <laughs> Sometimes it feels like, uh, it feels like it is. And what was the uh, high? What were you saying? I think you're lagging a little bit. It's not too bad. Yeah, I probably. Yeah. I just said Reddit's terrible. It's been terrible for yeah. years. I mean, yes. Lissa's asking um, if a fight was to happen in Delve like that, do you think it would have to be like BR Tech, where subcap fleets tried to control surrounding entry points instead of also being on the field in the system where the fight is taking place? So, because uh, Citadels have tethered. EDS, you can't bubble a super fleet on a cube star, right? You can't just, it's different to beat Agar, so you could, you, you could bubble like station and looks before, right? Because if you control the station, if you want to keep star, it's very easy to um, kill Dicta bubbles with PDS, and also you can just kill Hictus. Not, it's not too hard to kill Hictus, it's hard to bubble a keep star grid. It's not, I don't think it, uh, you can't, um, compare it. You, yeah, no, BTAC or and, and Titan Wars, uh, like Titan fights now are not comparable. They're just, the mechanics are so different surrounding everything. Like you, for example, when you bring Titans in, you have to defend them, right? You have to be able to kill whatever comes on top of them. So let's say, for example, Tests brings in their titan fleet at 290 kilometers and we bring in our titan fleet on the keep star edge so both titan fleets are in doomsday range and both titan fleets start opening up on each other but whoever you can whichever titan fleet gets additional pressure put on it is the one that's going to lose so for example if test and pam fam said we're not bringing any subs into system and goons said fuck it we're bringing all the subs and they brought their subs into, you know, on, on top of those tests, supers and titans, they'd be fucked, right? There's, there's, you just, you have to defend your supers and titans, especially on a hostile structure. And if you don't bring in your sub caps, you can't defend your supers and titans, right? So you're just going to bleed supers and titans. And likewise for the defenders, like if they, like if we just bring supers and titans onto a keep star and we don't bring in sub caps, and then they drop picks on us, for example. I know you can kill them with carriers and stuff, but depending on fighters and that kind of tie dye is a bit iffy. If you can't kill Hicks, they can just like bring a thousand dreads in on top of you, plus their Titan fleet. And it, yeah, like you, you have to be able to defend your supers and titans if you're going to use supers and titans to ref keep stars. So yeah. you have to bring your subcaps. Or you only bring them in under a gemma, right? And then you play it safe with that. But then again, like a gemma is not a hundred percent safety. Well, I mean that's that's their plan, right? They, like it's what yeah. Billy said. And it's a pretty smart one as well, is you take the iHubs, you wait until you control the jammer, you drop a jammer, they can't bring in their supers and titans anymore. I mean, that's a long grind then, right? Like it is, and it's not foolproof. There are ways about it, but as far yeah. as how they should play it, it's definitely the smart way to do it. The safer way. I'm not sure what the smart way. Like you can, you can always make the uh, 
the argument like it's safer always smarter right um i mean the second that's the thing about those fights right let's say there's a like a big keeps a fight and it really cl like there's like a real clash of titans right the, whoever, whatever side loses that fight there's a high chance of that side losing the war right it's like it's very likely that then you mind i mean your titan numbers will drop on the next timer not just by the amount of times you might have lost but in general it's like okay we lost already like that fight what are the chances we lose the next one right so the confidence in those titan pylons will drop so if it comes to like a titan clash kind of scenario i think um it is going to be like one of those fights it's not going to be a repeated kind of thing most likely i mean we've seen things right some weird shit happens in this game that's why we all like it i guess <laughs> so um it's you know it's a guess so it's it's gonna be interesting um we'll have to wait and see i guess yeah i mean it, if they had overwhelming titan numbers then it would be a different story but like they don't so are you sure they don't doesn't some fraternity have fuck loads of titans these days the they do but they yeah Vili, you've got a lot of titans you don't have an overwhelming number of titans to the point where somebody is not going to jump into you right that's all i'm saying it's not like there's 2000 titans gonna come on grid versus 700 imperium titans right that's what i mean like if somebody's gonna bring it's not a crazy on grid, difference in titans no like yeah. at the end of the day, if somebody brings a thousand titans and somebody else brings eight hundred titans, the the difference in dead titans is not going to be so massive that you wouldn't take that fight if you wanted to take that fight in the first place, right? I mean, yeah. the fight ends at downtime, so that's that's <laughs> basically like no, no, no. If you, you, the you fight ends bring... when the server shuts down. It might well, be downtime. Sure. <laughs> I think the big issue also would be if you're all jumping titans and you don't want to be the first to load because you know there's such a big issue with such heavy tie in your client loading if you don't load in and half your titan fleet doesn't load in properly you're completely fucked yeah yeah that's that's always that's the thing everything leading up to a fight like that right everyone wants to be early and then the other side needs to be earlier and then everything forms five hours before and then you know everyone you know that's the thing it's like how many of those fights can we actually do right let's like i'm not even saying any of those sides but like from a member's perspective how like how many keeps do we actually have in queries and dev there's a shit ton of them then at that like two at least two timers let's say they you know the initial rev is going to be out of our time zone and like let's say it's in china time zone or something so we can't do all that much about it but then there's going to be two timers for every keepster and every time it's going to be this massive effort from everyone so um you know i mean how many times do we want to do this like um i would totally get it if um you know a lot of people are like after like the first 10 timers they're like all right i've seen this okay like maybe i'll take a break you know? let's just hope like and i'm saying that from both sides right it's always like a yeah a concern i would say don't like that we don't burn our guys out so um all i know is if i could rep the keep star instead of just sitting there watching the timer tick down i would definitely join every fleet 100 percent all the time doesn't matter the time zone well i look forward to seeing you guys in less like very soon <laughs> I, I hear black rise is nice this time of year very nice yeah, hey, hi. Like, do you have some R64s? Do you want to sell us? Um, I don't think we have as many. Well, we definitely don't have as many as we used to. You'd have to bash a lot in US times then. Who's the biggest punch bag in low sec at the minute? Oh, definitely Wrecking Crew, right? They're like massive. There is a big coalition, right? Like Ma Siege Green is also friendly with them, so. It's Siege Green plus Wrecking Crew, and Wrecking Crew can form like full fleets right, of subcaps. Why did they grow so much recently? Do you know? They have lots of alliances um, as part of them, so more alliances join. So it's like um, 
they've taken Probably. Provi now, so I don't know if they're going to move in Provi, but I, I don't know why they joined. I guess Provi was a good punching bag, and they got members from that, and now they've taken Provi, and they still have the numbers. Well, because so. like, I just remember them from, like, what's his name, Rocket X and stuff, right? He still runs it. Yeah, but, like, they were super small. They were just, like, super hunters, like, with, like, yeah. I don't know, 20 dudes or so. Uh, I don't know what, what made him want to grow, but, like, you got Panda Purple Helmet Warriors, Dread Bomb, um, the Rogue Consortium, loads of, like, random uh, Templars, Chaos of lots of alliances. Tappy didn't blue them, did they? Yeah, no. they're part of... Uh, You're joking. Yeah, they're part of um, <laughs> Tappy. Oh, they have a pulse. That's all right. Let's not, let's not make this into Reddit here. All right. Oh, good. Everyone calm down. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a little bit of a, maybe it's a good thing that we see like a small group like that suddenly like pick up numbers and shit. Right. It may, may be a good, might be a good sign of, you know, what people are looking for a little bit nowadays more like content oriented because they, they didn't have any that they couldn't provide you with like the best reading space or cheap supers or like any of the coalition stuff but they like they had some content like a specific content i guess i wonder is the game getting to a point where everyone was kind of climbing the mountain to be the biggest and the best and kind of that 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 has become the normal now so everyone is gonna want to do something different away from all the tie-dye you know and all the other stuff i like i wonder is that is that going to be the next steps in eve for, for what people do i think the limiting factor to that will always be the amount of timers going on at a certain time and the fact that barely any go on so everyone dog past the timers regardless of whether you're mid-scale or large-scale yeah 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 you might be right Right. There's a lot of things to fix in Eve, but at least you can stay positive about it, right? Kind of. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Um, I like to talk to people about s stuff that are still playing and are active and are doing shit. You know what I mean? And then I know how you, like, recently, like, I don't want to say retired, but, you know, you, you're taking it slow and stuff. But like yeah. up until like very recently, you were still active. Like what I don't like is like those ex Eve players that are on Reddit like complaining endlessly about stuff, and then clearly they don't understand what actually is happening, and they don't understand what goes on and stuff like that. I, that stuff kind of annoys me, right? I mean, I get it. Everyone has an opinion. It's armchair generals, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, everyone has an opinion on everything. But do you need to voice every opinion all the time? And that's what we see on Reddit, right? Like everyone's shouting at each other, la 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 la, and then it goes nowhere. There's no discussion. You'll never win an argument on Reddit, right? Everyone tries. But and then CCP looks at Reddit for their patches and stuff. They always like look at Reddit the most. I swear, yeah. Reddit is not a good place to look. Yeah, I wonder would it be possible to make something like Reddit. Because, I mean, uh, we had this discussion in the general chat earlier. Um, why do people go to Reddit? And, like, Reddit is the best place to go to get information at the very base level, right? Like, a lot of people will go to Reddit to meme and, and to bullshit and, and call out other people. But news, but really, yeah. A lot of people go to Reddit for the news because, like, one thing I've noticed is there's not the same. Like, I don't go to INN. I don't go to Eve News 24 if that's even still a thing. Whereas years ago, I would have. Like, Reddit was not the place to go. It was, you know, it was those news sites. And I wonder, is that what Eve is missing? Is it, is it missing kind of somewhere that you can get all the information that is not a toxic shithole, like, occupied by window lickers, right? <laughs> I, I don't know how you would do it, though. That's the problem, right? I don't know how you would, like, I think Reddit, like, in that case, it's a good system, you know? There's an incentive for people to be, like, the first guy to post that fucking thing for those Reddit shit points. I forgot what it's called, karma, right? 
So you want to post early to get the camera. So it's very fast and the news are like, it's very reliable when it comes to like, like what you said, the basic level, right? Someone posts like, oh, CCP announced this update. So it's very fast. It's right there, boom, right? And it's going to be on the front page and the upvote system kind of works in that regard. Um, it's just not good for discussion, which is a lot of people take that, um, take it the wrong way. They, they, they approach it from a forum point of view instead of that, you know, plain like a uh, site, like news site kind of thing, right? So they think, oh, I, I go in there and then we just like, we can talk about things. It's like, yeah, maybe if you're lucky, right? But as soon as it becomes somewhat controversial of a topic or not controversial, but like anything you can disagree on, people will like endlessly, like there's no, like you're not going to change anyone's mind there. Right. So I think people spend too much energy there. I've, I know I've spent too much energy there too. Right. Happened to me before. Got trapped into some fucking arguments. I'm like, what the fuck am I even doing here? Right. I mean, what happened when we got banned, right? The amount of shit we got on Reddit. Like yeah. The amount of, of arguments and like trying to put proof and reason forward, you know, for something like that uh, to people who really don't give a shit, right? They're not there to listen. They're just there to, to shit post. Yeah. I mean, at the same time, maybe, maybe, I don't know. I don't think so, but maybe I've got like a, a good shit filter because like, I don't remember reading too much negative shit. I remember a lot of uh, positive stuff too that people said like, ah, I don't see that, like, this is fishy. Like, I, like, I can't imagine like them doing this and all that stuff. So like, I remember more positive stuff than negative stuff to be quite honest. But maybe, maybe that's just after like a long time, you just remember the good times, I guess. Or the good that's things. Special stuff on Reddit is basically what we discussed now about like citadels and you know Athenors, posses, whatever, right? That's what people really get up in arms about, honestly, on Reddit, is what I've found. I mean, I bet there has also been like for sure there has been like discussions uh, on Reddit um where people actually had good points. I've seen that before. It's rare, but like that people actually bring up good points and then you um you actually go like mm, actually it's a good point of view right and stuff like this it's just too rare a little bit i guess well as well as that you can't agree with them because they're on the hostile side right and uh, like the 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 thing about reddit is if you're in test goons are bad if you're in goons test is bad if you're in initiative everybody is bad <laughs> if you're in it you're shit right and that's that's basically how it works so even if you uh even if like if somebody has a good point, you know, you can't say, oh, well, actually, yeah, I, I kind of agree with you on that because it's the other side, right? I've, I've done that before though, but yeah. But at the same time, that's another thing about the, the whole Reddit thing. Like why are there even flares? You know, why, why do people run around with like the initiative uh, tag? Like what is the fucking point? You know what I mean? Because half of them are not in it anyway, right? Like, What's the what's the point in this? It's just to um, provoke bullshit, right? So you'll never like it, it. Just it just puts the uh, the whole like shit arguments on an, on another level, then, right? So I didn't, just hmm? didn't Asher write like some like five thousand word essay on Reddit about how goons are the good people or something? Yeah, yeah, you did. I think I read the entire thing. I also read the response from um, Olmeca to. I'm not sure if I read the, the whole thing, but um, yeah, I read the. I, you know what? If I have to say something to that, there's no good guys, and there shouldn't be. You know, that's exactly what you need in this game. Imagine everyone would agree. Yeah, these guys are the good guys. Wouldn't that be Snuff. fucking boring? But wouldn't Snuff. that be shit for the game? It would be bad for the game if you think about it. If everyone agrees, oh yeah, actually, let's say, Willy is the the best guy, and he's the like he's the ultimate good guy. So tests are the good guys. Imagine everyone agrees. Then why would we fight them? You know? Okay, well, you know, Eve, Eve, Eve University, Panda, Eve University, the good guys. You can't say anything against them, right? I mean, I've heard some things too. Really. There's yeah, I mean, I've heard that, you know... Some... I've heard some fucked up shit happen in EVE University. There you go. There's always, like, 
Every, like every alliance in this game is full of human beings, right? So you get both. You get shit guys and you get good guys in every group in the game. I mean, unless it's a one-man corp and it actually happens to be one good guy, right? But, you know, and that's how it should be. Like the other side needs to see you as the bad guy and you need to see yourself as the good guy technically. Otherwise, like what, like, what are you fighting for here anyway, right? So At the minute, nothing because there's no fucking content generators. Well, I mean, there is a lot of content going on. Let's, I mean, on the on a larger scale, you know, it's it's ramping up, and I think it's part of the story, right? In this case, I'm not a big fan of these big um, tie dye fights, but the story part of it, I can appreciate that, right? I I really can. If I'm on the bad side or good side, it's uh, whatever. But um, you know, I just think. Yeah, I, I just don't think there is any, like, there's no good side or bad side. And But Asha made a good point, right? Saying, like, it's better for Eve if you are seen as the bad guy, at least by, by like, a, a good chunk of people, then you did something right, right? I agree That's with that. That's what people always lived with, to be honest, is it's better to have enemies, right? It's a boring enough game right now. Yeah. But yeah, it's, I mean, it's interesting. It, it all kind of ties in, though, right? Because, like, there are opportunities for content, but, like, that opportunity disappears very quickly when everybody on both sides decides to show up because it's the only thing happening, right? Definitely. That's been an issue for a really long time now. Yeah, it has, and you know what? Every time we think, shit, this is an issue, we don't realize in a year or two it's going to be even worse if it goes... It, it it keeps going that direction, right? Think about like think back at like 2016 or whatever. We already thought, oh shit, this and this needs fixing. But then Citadels came in, you know. The, the like it's very important that we change the direction where this is going, right? Um, and it's I mean it's not easily done, right? Not easily done. Uh, I think CCP just need to stick like a poster up in their lobby with mission statement that literally says get people into space. Like if they'd done, if they made all their mechanic changes and everything else around the mantra, get people into space, Eve would probably be a better place, I think. I think. I think what they should do is, if you have to take a jump bridge, you have to pay real money. You know, like paying your phone bill, you know, extras. And uh, also, if you jump a capital, then you also have to pay real money. Make the game much better. Could you do a direct debit, or do you have to put in your credit card details each time, though? Because that might get a bit tedious. Nah, direct debit, obviously. <laughs> Best idea ever. CCP, make it happen. So do you say turn, that, Panda? They're the only group that can afford jump bridges. <laughs> Alrighty, guys. Hey, maybe that's the idea we should end it on. Because we are pushing one and a half hours. Um, if anyone has a really good question in chat, you should bring it up right now. I might just be able to bring it in. But other than that, I think. Do you guys have any like last words? Or anything you want to bring up? Like I've got time. If you, if you want to, yeah. if you want to talk about something special, then bring it up now. Everyone in Pappy and everyone in the Imperium sucks. Okay. <laughs> there you heard it. Yeah, snuff other good guys. It's official. <laughs> Panda, who's your favorite FC and why is it Dark Shines? Because, like because he. I don't know. Because he has a good accent. Wow, that's the best you could fucking come up with. <laughs> Turkey tree. <laughs> mm. what's, a, what's a good FC quality you got? I think you're really good at the court thing. I think you're really good at like having a good overview. That because Maybe that's because I suck at that. That's why it highlights it for me. That, that shiny boy. Relaxed. Yeah, he is, hmm? I think. I mean, he gets angry at people at times. But he's oh, no, relaxed. never. I am the most chill, unangry <laughs> person you will ever meet, ever. I used never to see... Never to kick someone. Totally. 
dude, Bliss Rage is like way more than I've ever seen. Pandora, you know what? Dark. Yeah, but, but you know what? Bliss, like recently or like the last year or so, like he's a little bit more on the ragey side. He didn't used to be um, um, that ragey, you know what I mean? I think it, it picked up a bit, which is weird. Did you get into a relation? Everything is very like every yeah. everybody in the world recently, like in the last year, has been affected one way or the other by certain things, right? So real life in general for basically everybody. I mean, I know for me myself, I fly off the handle very quickly in fleets, like especially this year, because I know I'm like I've got shit in real life, like with COVID nineteen and stuff. It's just everybody is stressed, so people tend to fly off the handle a lot quicker. So. Stay yeah, on yeah. fucking anchor, right? Yeah. Don't lemming that gate, guys. Come on. And if you see someone lemming, don't follow assuming everyone's jumping. Please. Come yeah. on. Get your shit together. Yeah. And get your fucking drones in. Like, what the fuck? I know all the way. It's like... All the fucking 15... hobgoblin. <laughs> <laughs> it's just... I... What frustrates me the most, right, about FCing is... I'll be on our mumble FC. I'll be on Goon Mumble coordinating or on Discord coordinating. I'll have scouts out. I'll have my Titan bridging people forward. I'll be calling targets. I'll be anchoring, doing all this shit. Not very well, but doing it. And then you have this one guy who is playing one handed while watching Netflix and who just doesn't anchor, burns off in the wrong direction, sends his drones after the anchor, and just does everything possible wrong. It just infuriates me. There's always that one guy. That he's always there. That one guy. You act like it's just it's like these, you know, noob F1 pushes, but, you know, it happens to everyone. It happens in snuff, right? And we're supposed to be some, like, you know, elite type of organization in reality. Dude, it happens to me all the time. Exactly. I mean, I don't... That's, that's maybe why I don't rage. I mean, basically ever, right? Because like too many times I join Shine's fleet and um, if there's nothing else for me to do, like usually I look for like some supportive role, right? Some like you want me to do something, but it, sometimes I don't have to do anything. And then I'm sitting in a lodgy, nothing to do. And then I find myself browsing like YouTube or whatever, right? And then like I realize, oh shit, like where's the fleet, right? <laughs> so I'm the guy, I'm the guy 20 off, 20 km off the anchor or like whatever, like it happens, right? That's why so, we have whisper keys, so I don't have to call you a fucking idiot in front of the fleet. <laughs> that never happened. I, li I like uh, how in fleets, a lot of times, it's like good cop, bad cop with Shines and Pando. Because Shines is like, if you do that one more fucking time, you're gone from the fucking alliance. And then Pando's like, it's all right, guys. It's going to be okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've never threatened to kick somebody from the alliance. I've just threatened to kill them on the fleet. <laughs> I bet you have mentioned it before. You have definitely nope. threatened to kick people from Alliance. No. Never Bliss happened. has done it though. But you've done it too. I know it. Kind of what, mm -hmm. has some, what has somebody done to warrant being kicked from the Alliance? Unless it's the fucking Seabo Munins. Alright, maybe the Seabo Munins. It's not Any even that. Be. I think there was like an incorrect bubble that happened one time and you threatened to kick them from Alliance. It was something small. I remember specifically. I'm not trying to call you out right now. But she's kind of trying to call you out right now. No, I'm not. <laughs> Sounds like someone needs to get kicked from the alliance. <laughs> <laughs> Pando, save me. What I never, and me and Tao never understood was like, Pando, you just said that, you know, when Shines is seeing you'll do the supporting role, like take a logi. Why do all these like block fleets have literally like 15 monitors in each fleet? I don't know. I like I never fly I only fly monitors in certain fleets if I FC myself really, right? I don't know why people are so focused on that, to be honest. I a lot of my fleets and Kiki fleets, for example, are too slow anyway. So I don't even fly monitors there. If I'm not F if I'm not the FC, I will get out of the fucking monitor and get into something else where it doesn't matter if I die, right? Because the monitor is such a boring ship to fly. It's useless. If you exactly unless you're a drone trigger, you know, that's the only argument you could make. You have a painter and you could drone trigger, but like who does that? Right? So there's no need for more monitors unless I mean this it's always good to have backup. Someone disconnects, someone gets booshed off, someone you know, monitors die too, right? But yeah, um, like 
like yeah one or two exactly i think having one or two that totally makes sense i don't know why they have seven for example i just see milan saying in chat that she sometimes has to jump up to close the windows in the computer room because i'm raging so much <laughs> let's see so maybe it there is you a go. <laughs> there you go the first step is admitting you have a problem dark yeah. I mean, yeah, but it's not me that's the problem, right? It's the fucking people in fleet. You can't say some shit who aren't anchoring. Exactly. At the end of the day, Dark Shines, you are the FC, and if they make mistakes, it's your fault. Um, guys, I'm just reading up on, on chats here. Karma vote, like, if you, like, if any, like, bottom left corner, you can see, like, I muted the event sounds because it interrupts the podcast, especially when we upload it for like spotify and so on it's weird when suddenly there's like weird voices coming up and like so i what do you mean weird voices arnold you mean brisk for example <laughs> right yeah uh but yeah um it should be should be all fine though so guys everyone who like subbed and all that stuff like thanks for the support in general right i know there's like you know who you are um so much appreciated guys but yeah, I mute it like just for the podcast usually. And then one question: What do you think is the main difference between null and low sec FCing? I think battleships. <laughs> that's basically, or let's say bombs are the main difference. I love bombing. For me personally, that would be the big biggest difference. I don't know. Hi, what's your take on it? What's the biggest difference? Low and null. FC. The scale, I guess, but also I think. Um, yeah, it's way more, you can brawl much easier in NoSec because you can escape much easier, right? And you don't get bombed, pandas, right? NoSec is harder in a lot of ways than LoSec. And LoSec is more about min-maxing and having, you know, being able to brawl it out and have expensive fits so you can min-max, but in NoSec it doesn't matter as much because you can't use implants and it's harder to commit to grid because, you know, you can get bobbled and lose everything. Yeah. Low sec is harder, so you have to think about more. Yeah, I think you get away with a little bit more in low sec. You, you can take a little bit more risk um, and then get away with it and not lose your entire fleet as easily, right? No. You can drop titans or dreads or like basically anything in low sec. All you have to do is kill hicks, and you know, even after they die, their bubble doesn't last for two minutes on grid. Whereas if you are in null sec and you're Blapping dictors, even though you're killing the ship, the bubble still lasts for two minutes unless you smart bomb it or something. Rest in peace, honey monster. F7C, that, never forget. <laughs> that was an epic fight. I never, I always think back to that fight. That was a really good one. And uh, what was that fight over? An R64. <laughs> yeah. Hey, like I never, I didn't disagree. You know, I didn't. But would that fight not have happened if there was a damage cap on that R64? Who knows? Who knows? But yeah, it was a really good fight. And we, uh, even even though we lost the Titan there. Oh, Shine that was a Citadel. We would not have had that fight because Void Bombs existed back then. And holy crap, Void Bombs are horrible. Yeah, maybe. Oh, maybe that's yeah. true on the Citadels. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they removed those, so that's good. Yeah. So let's see, do we have any more questions? I didn't really see any. Oh, that was the same question again, null and slow. When will we kill the TTT? <laughs> when it's time. Path F1, when it's time. Um, but yeah, guys, I think we, uh, we should just call it right here. So I would say thanks everyone for hanging out and then thanks shiny boy and hi and Isa, and yeah, good stuff, and see everyone on the next one. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.